Hey crafters, Lisa here from Fun Stuff Crafts. So glad you could join me for another Inspiration Friday. So this week, I am really excited to share with you the tool that I like to use to design a lot of my sublimation projects. But hey, before we get there, I wanna thank you guys so much for stopping by my channel. And if this is your first time, make sure you click on that subscribe button and click on the bell and YouTube should alert you each time I upload a new video. We try to do it every Friday. That's why we call it Inspiration Friday. So this week, we are gonna be starting out our tutorial in Canva. So often when I'm doing supplementation for you guys, I just show you a ready-made design and I show you how to add it to a substrate. But this week, I thought it would be fun to take you on a journey. So give me a second, I'm gonna get my camera angle change and I'm gonna join you in Canva. So today I want to take you on the journey of design and I love to use Canva whenever I'm designing projects for sublimation. So I thought it would be fun instead of just showing you a completed design that I actually show you how I use Canva. Now Canva has a paid version and they have a free version. I do have the paid version and you can tell there I've got my initials up here. But today I am going to be using free elements because I want to show you how you can get started using design, excuse me, using Canva totally free. So let's start out by right up here in the right hand corner is create a design. And so I'm going to go ahead and select, cu select custom size, but I want you to see some of their suggestions they have. And I do use some of these other features. I use this lots of times when I'm doing Pinterest posts or if I'm making something larger or if I'm doing an Instagram post. But today we're going to be doing a custom size. One of the projects I'm going to be working on today is with a glass tumbler. So I'm going to go ahead and change my uh, measurement to inches. And I know that the, the diameter of my glass is nine inches and I know the height is six. Now I'm working with eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, but I always like to start with whatever size design I want. So I know that my blank sheet here right now is nine by six. And as I create my design, I know I've got just what's going to fit on my glass and it's going to make it easier when it comes time to print it later. So what I like to do first is there are lots of different selections over here on the left hand side, but one of my first go to's is always elements. And so with the elements feature, you can type in what you are looking for. Now I will tell you that if you see this little crown and you hover over it and it goes to pro, that means it's part of the paid version. So we are not going to be using the paid version at all today, but we are going to be using free elements. So I am doing a glass that I'm going to use to make sure Lisa gets her water in. So I thought it would be fun to just use some of these different elements that have to do with water. What I want to do is I'm going to go up and filter it just so we don't get confused by what's free and what's paid. And I'm only gonna select on the free items. So that way I know everything that I'm looking at, I can use in my design and I do not need to have the paid version. So let's start out with, I'm just gonna throw some things on there that I think might be cute to add for our design. And let's see what else we can find out there. Oh, I like these little drops. And as I grab those drops, you can see it's got some recommendations and you can always look at those and see if you see some other things that you like. But I think I'm just gonna go with those three elements and we're gonna do some duplication and we are gonna do some color changes. So I'm just grabbing the images with my mouse and I'm moving them around. And I like this design as my base, but you know, I'm doing it on a frosted mug. So I want vibrant colors. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my color panel up here and I'm gonna change this to a darker blue. 
And just like other programs, you are gonna grab the corner and you are going to increase the size. And I'm gonna make mine just short of the edge of my paper and I'm gonna bring that down towards the bottom. So I like that kind of of my base. Then what I wanna do is I think I wanna change this color a little bit too, whoops. And I was already on the color panel, Lisa. So let's play with what other colors that might look good as. I like that lighter blue, I think. Now, this is the fun part. I wanna duplicate that. So see here, I can go to duplicate and I can put it right over there and I can have two of those. And then this little drop, I thought would be cute to make just a little bit smaller. And I'm gonna like put it like it's dropping right there. And let's make that one be, oops, let's make, I'm grabbing the teal there. I'm gonna turn that to the dark blue and I'm gonna take that white and I'm gonna put it as blue. So just a little bit of coordinating color there. And then if I wanna duplicate that, I can duplicate it. If I wanna put those right over the top, I can, or up here on this position bar, I could send that to the back. Definitely don't wanna send it to the back because it just doesn't quite look right. But let's go ahead and move that back up to the front. But just to, so you can see, you can do some layered effects there. So I think right now I'm kind of looking like what my design looks like. But you know what? I want to put some words in there. So let's go over back over here to the left hand side and let's grab the text box. And let's see if we can find a heading that we like. Now, again, there are some pro versions here, but there are also some free ones. So if you scroll down towards the bottom, these are some combination fonts that they've already put together for you. So you can definitely grab from there, or you can go up and you can just grab a, a font that you like. And then you can go ahead here and grab any of these fonts that are available. You'll see if you have um, the, the crown, meaning it's paid, but there's quite a few fonts that are available to you for you to use. So I'm not going to use that. I am gonna use one of these cute designs they have. And this one down here, I think it's really fun sometimes just to use the way they've put wording together. So I am going to grab, I think I might go back up to the top, but you guys can see there's lots of fun ones here. And so I am gonna go right back up to the top and I'm gonna grab this sale one. Whoops, let's get rid of that heading though. So by get, to get rid of that heading, all I'm gonna do is click on it and I'm gonna throw it in the garbage. So now let's bring this in. So before I start changing the wording to this, this is all grouped together, okay? It's one, one larger image put together. If I come up here to the dots, I can ungroup it. So that way everything is individual. Because I don't necessarily want all of these lines around my design because I've already got those cute little water drops. So all I'm doing is highlighting them with my mouse and I'm deleting them. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, let's make this be drink and let's double click on this and let's make this be water. Now, make that a little bit bigger so it's all on one line. Oops. And I'm just gonna grab it and move it. The other thing that's really nice about Canva is you guys can barely see, see I know I've got it centered, that pink line going across, so I know I'm in the middle of my paper, my design. And I can make this guy be a little bit bigger. I can either grab him from here and make him bigger, or I can go up here to my font size and make him bigger. So let's just make him a little bit bigger. This is to help remind Lisa that she needs to drink her water. And then let's change this one to every sip counts. And an exclamation point. And let's make that one a little bit bigger too. And again, it needs to be stretched out. So I'm gonna stretch that out. And there we have it. 
Now, I could play with this if I wanted to. If I wanted to change my color, I could come up here and I could do something really crazy like I could do red so like it's going to stand out and Lisa's going to see it. Or I could go to a hot pink. I mean, you guys can do whatever you want with your colors there. I'm going to go ahead and just stay with the black. And I think my design looks pretty good right now. So what I like to do is I like to add a, add a title to it. So um, I'm just going to say this is going to be drink water. Okay, so I'm ready to go. I've got a drink water is my name of my design. Now what I want to do is I want to download it. So what I do for a download is you go up to the share button and I always download um, as a PNG. There are other options of downloading and you can see them all here in the drop down. I find whenever I am doing a sublimation, I want it to be the best quality I can get. So I download as a PNG. So I'm going to go ahead and just click on that one. It shows that it's going to be a PNG and I'm going to download it. Now I'm using my MacBook Pro. And so when I click it, it's going to show it going down and it's going to drop into my downloads. So I'm just going to come down here and I'm going to grab that design and I know it is the drink water. And there is my design. Now, the one thing I really like about using um, the dimensions, if I were to go up now to file and want to go to print, it is showing it right here, but I'm going to grab it and I'm going to go to my sublimation printer and it is showing that it's on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, but you can see my design is coming in at a hundred percent. I know my design is still nine, um, nine by six. Now I've already got default sublimation settings set in. So I'm going to grab my default setting and you can see this went to a mirror image. Really important whenever you're doing sublimation that we go to a mirror image. One other thing that I like to always do is I always like to go to my print settings and I always like to grab quality print. And so that means that I'm going to get the best um, performance of my ink out of my printer when I'm getting ready to print it. So I'm going to go ahead and send this one over to the printer. Let's do one more design together. And so this time I have taken up golf again and I decided that I need to make myself a custom golf towel. So what I'm going to do, oops, Lisa forgot that needs to be inches. So when my golf towel is folded up and ready to hang on my bag, it is five inches in width by 12 inches. So let's go ahead and create a new design that has that on it. What I thought would be really fun is to put a cute saying on it and some pictures of some golfers. So let's start with the text. And I think I'm going to grab this one first and I want to change it to green because green is golf. And I'm going to change this wording to say par and then let's change this one. Oops change this one to say and then we'll go to time so it's party time perfect for golfing right so let's go ahead and go back up to our elements and I was looking earlier and I found this great golf tee and so let's go ahead and put that on my golf towel now let's think about this for a second. I've got to put a grommet in the top of my towel. So I want to move my T down just a little bit. So I'll have room to put the grommet up there. And then since this is going to be my golf towel, I think I should put a woman golfer on there. So I actually, you know what? I think I might put a couple. So let's go ahead just like we did before and let's duplicate and let's duplicate it again so we'll put three on there and center that one up a little bit perfect now let's give them a little bit of color let's give it a little bit of pizzazz so let's go with some purple and let's go with 
another color of another shade there and then let's do some blue so how's that look we have now got a party time um, design that we just put together and look how quick that was to do so I'm going to go ahead and name this party time um, golf towel and I'm going to go ahead and download it just like we did before and I'll have these two images ready to go and I'll show you how we put them all together. Okay, so we're back and I got my images off the printer. There's the first one we put together. That one's gonna go on our um, frosted glass. And then the second one is gonna go on my golf towel. So let me show you what I mean by um, the different things I wanna be using. So this is an example of the frosted glass. This is a design that I did earlier. Might be kind of hard to see, but it says Washington, and then it's got a really pretty wave coming off of it. This happened to be a, a paid version um, um, image that I grabbed. This is another idea for a frosted glass, and this is actually where I got the inspiration to try the frosted gas, glass. I've been seeing lots of people doing them on these are the jars you can pick up at Walmart, and so I'd seen a lot of people doing these, and so I went and got them, and yeah, they turn out nice, but I just don't think they're as vibrant color-wise, um, and can't find them anymore. So I decided, hey, I need to find a resource if I wanna be able to do this. So I went out and I went looking for where I could pick these up at a reasonable price. And I found a great reseller on Etsy and I'll make sure I put the link down below. But what I get is a really nice gift box. It comes with a straw and then it all comes individually wrapped. And so we are going to be putting our water drinking image on this one. And then the other image that I'm going to be using on is going to be on a golf towel. Now, when I say a golf towel, I didn't go out and just buy golf towels. I went out and bought these towels and these happen to be 20% polyester and 20% polymide, probably saying that wrong. Um, but for that image, all I'm going to do is fold up the towel just to the dimensions we talked about when we were doing the design. I'm going to put the image here on the front and then I'm going to add a grommet, put it on my golf bag and I'm ready to go. So the golf towel we're going to be doing in the heat press, the glass I'm going to be doing in my convection oven. Now, a lot of people use tumbler presses to do theirs. And from what I'm seeing with people that are using tumbler presses is you have to do it two-sided. So you do part of it and then you got to go in there and you've got to do it again. With the convection oven, I set it and go. So right now I've got my convection oven. It's off to the side here. It's heating up to 400 degrees and we're going to have it bake for 12 minutes. Now, let me tell you, the first time I put one in, this one, I was a little nervous. Um, I just, I don't know why I was just nervous. I hadn't done glass yet in the convection of at 400 degrees, but turned out great. So let me show you what you need to do. Let's put that one together first. So definitely want to remove um, the um, lid. Don't want to have that. And I also like to cut down my image. So I'm going to cut down the image. Now you could definitely use a paper cutter for this. Um, to get it exactly straight, but Lisa is going to eyeball it right now. And what I like to do is I am trying to get it so that I can easily wrap this. Now this glass has got a little bit of a contour to it right here and right here. And I wanna put the image smack dab in the middle of that. And that's when I did my dimensions on what size I needed, I made sure that I took that into account. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that right down to above where my little raindrops are. And that's also why I left 
a little bit of edge out here when I was doing the design because I wanted to be able to wrap these really nice. So what I do is I've got my heater or my um, heat resistant tape ready to go. I've also got a, um, a, a vacuum seal bag that I'm going to put it in or a heat shrink <laughs> vacuum seal heat shrink bag that I'm going to put it in. And I have got my heat gun all ready to go. So let's wrap it first. So what I do when I wrap it is I like to pull it as tight as possible. Okay. So I'm putting it up as tight as I can get it. And I'm going to eyeball it so these guys will match because what I want is I'm going to trim one of these right to the edge. And then we're going to try to match these up as close as we can. And just carefully do it. You don't want any air left in here. And what I like to do is just mark it with a little fold. And then I'm going to trim my paper. Again, you guys could use a pen. You guys can use whatever works best for you. But I want to mark it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on my glass. And then I'm going to pull this as tight as possible. And what I mean by that is I'm going to put one piece of tape on one side. Whoops. And I normally like my thicker tape. But I literally finished off a roll of my thicker tape with that last one that I did. So I want to make sure I'm evened up and I'm pulling that as tight as possible. Okay, so I've got a nice tight finish there. I'm going to do that on the top, the bottom, and the middle. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one right down that seam. So I'm just trying to get any air out of that I can. I'm going to go ahead. I've got a little bit of a gap there. So I'm just going to continue to do that. Okay. So I've got that nice and tight going all the way around. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one more piece right down the center. Now, one thing I learned with this is that my heat resistant bags really like to stick to this glass. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure up my heat resistant, my shrink wrap, and I wanna make it the same size as my glass. So, and actually look at that. I'm gonna, so I'm getting two bags out of one because it is basically right smack dab in the middle. I'm going to take my heat resistant bag. I'm going to put it right in here. My tape is sticking to it. Put it right in there, and then I'm going to get my grab my heat gun, and we are going to apply some heat to it. So let's see if Lisa's extension card is going to work here. Okay. So I'm going to pick up my jar and I'm just going to take my heat gun. idea on the heat gun is to get that sucked in and be nice and tight, airtight, right? Now what I'm going to do is my um, convection oven is just about up to heat. I'm going to go over and put that in. I'll take you over there so you can see me put it in and then we'll come back and we'll get going on the golf towel. Okay, so I'm here at my convection oven and I'm going to open it up. I've taken my racks out and I put this down on the bottom and I'm just gonna set it in there. I've got my timer going. It's already at 11 minutes and 53 seconds, but I set it for 12 minutes. So we're gonna let that go. And the thing that I think is so cool about this is when we come back, just about the time this is done, I'm gonna show it to you and you're gonna be able to see the image all the way through. So let's hop back over to the table and we'll get going on the towel. 
Okay, so now let's go for the towel, okay? So like I said, I have got just a standard um, kitchen towel here. And I did, like I had mentioned before, it is 80 polyester and 20 polymite. Like I said, I'm probably saying that wrong. And I am just going to fold it into thirds, okay? Fold it into thirds and then I'm folding it in half, okay? So then all I'm gonna do, now that I know exactly how I want my image, I'm gonna take my towel and in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a ruler and I am going to tear some of this off just so it's not such a straight edge. And so I'm just gonna tear that right up. And I'm gonna do that all the way around. Okay, so I've got that tore all the way around. I'm gonna lay this right where I want it on my image. I am going to grab some more heat resistant tape to tape it into place. Then I'm gonna take this over to the heat press and then we will have a golf towel done. So now let's join me over at the heat press. Okay, so we're over at the heat press and as you can see, I've opened up my towel just to take the fold out. And I've also got a piece of butcher paper protecting my pad. And so I've got butcher paper, I've got my towel, I've got my image face down, and I've got my heat resistant tape. Now I'm gonna take one more piece of butcher paper and I'm gonna cover that up. And that is what I call blowout paper. And that is to protect the top of my press from getting any of the ink in it. And I'm gonna bring over my press. Now we're not quite up to heat yet. As soon as that comes up to heat, I'm gonna go ahead and clamp it down and I will show you the results. So here is that golf towel hot off the heat press. I just love how the colors turned out. So now let's go check on our glass mug. So I wanna show you what that looked like when it came out of the convection oven. I have not taken the shrink wrap off yet and I have not taken the paper, but you can see those colors coming through already. So let me get my camera angle change and we'll take off the paper and see what this looks like. Okay, now keep in mind, this has been in the convection oven for um, 12 minutes at 400 degrees. So this is hot. Lisa always gets excited about getting it started. And so, let me very carefully, you definitely could let this cool all the way, but I'm so excited to show it to you. So I can't wait, but be super careful, you guys. These things are so hot. And I definitely would not be touching this without a glove on. And oh, I love the colors already. Look how beautiful that looks, you guys. Now I need to let that cool off and I'm gonna give you guys a closer look at it once it cools off, but wow, did it turn out beautiful. So now we just need to finish our golf towel and we will have two designs completely designed in Canva and both of them put onto a sublimation substrate. So give me a So I added a grommet to that golf towel and it's ready to add on to my golf bag. I just love how these colors turned out and it's so fun to be able to personalize things with that design we did in Canva today. Now let's take a look at that frosted glass. I just love how these colors came out and there's another one I did earlier today. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on learning how you can use Canva to make your next sublimation designs. If you're looking for other ideas, make sure you check out my blog at funstuffcrafts.com.